Hey, Ecom Masters, welcome to the show. My name is Mike Weiss, Chief Community Officer at Dropified, and as a thank you for tuning in to the e-commerce mastery show, we've put together a special podcast-only e-commerce training just for you. Now, in it, you're going to learn the ins and outs of how to set up your own brand of products where you can literally put your own labels, brands, logos, and messaging over top of top selling, in demand, high quality, high profit products that are exclusive to supplements, CBD, skincare, and pet products. And here's the key no minimum order quantities, no upfront inventory costs. And I'm going to show you how to do this in literally minutes. Now, guys, we refine these principles over the course of five years with working with over a hundred thousand of our own e compreneur customers just like you so to get immediate 100 percent free access all you got to do is go to dropify.com forward slash podcast dash special or you can just click the link below and you're going to learn exactly how we do this in just minutes thank you so much for being part of the dropify family and enjoy the show Eric, I am so excited to be able to chat with you today because your business is the 33rd fastest growing marketing company in the entire U.S. of beautiful A. And I'm so curious to learn, like, what do you do differently than everybody else? Obviously, you're killing it in the performance marketing game, but what are you doing that's just better than everybody else? Yeah, so thanks for having me here. Um, I would say that, well, really the performance marketing industry has been around for a really long time. Um, I actually got back, I got into it back in, I would say 2008, 2009 during the recession. uh, And the company that I had joined where I had found out about the model um, was the fifth fastest growing company in the country. They had done $92 million that year. And it was just incredible to see this growth. Um, And so I was hired on actually doing more marketing for the company. um, And it was the first time I ever learned about the model. Uh, But what I realized when I was, um, you know, kind of spending some more time there and digging in under the hood, I just realized that a lot of the products that were being promoted, a lot of the uh, marketing strategies that were being done, it was just very low quality. Um, and I think it was a very wild west. It was just people saying and doing whatever they wanted to kind of make sales. And uh, it kind of really turned me off and I ended up leaving, but I always had in the back of my mind of how powerful that model was and what that would look like if you could actually pair performance marketing with really great innovative brands. Because as a brand owner, um, Traditionally, you're going to work with a an ad agency, and you're going to be spending, um, you're going to be giving an onboarding fee or retainers or a percentage of spend, and there's literally no main incentive uh, for them to scale you profitably. They're incentivized to spend more, not earn more for you, and so um, it's a very high risk proposition, especially for a lot of startups where you're putting the very limited marketing budget that you have into. Uh, one, you know, one relationship that you hope will net you the result that you're looking for. And if not, I mean, it can put you out of business. And so this model is, is much different. And so the way that, you know, we operate is when we find an amazing product um, that's innovative, that solves a problem that we can sell all over the world, we build everything that that company needs to profitably scale customer acquisition online and in every market. So we're building their funnels, we're building the images, the creatives, all the stuff they need. We don't charge them anything up front. There's no retainers, there's no you know, hidden fees, nothing onboarding. We basically create all of that. And the only time we ever get paid is when we generate a sale and that's off of a commission. Um, The thing that really separates us, though, is that we're not actually the ones driving traffic. We're not an agency. We actually create performance partnerships with some of the best performance marketers in the entire world. And those include media buyers, agencies, publishers, influencers. And so what they're doing is they're looking for amazing products to promote that Giddy Up has kind of brought into this new industry, things that may have done millions of dollars in crowdfunding or you might have seen in Shark Tank. 
And they're basically spending their own money on ad spend, driving traffic to the funnels that we created. And we're giving them a massive piece of the commission for every sale that they drive. And so the way that we're different, I would say, is that, you know, number one, we only work with, you know, real brands, with real products that care about the customers, that give great customer support, that fulfill in a very uh, fast manner. Um, and everything we do is to ensure that we respect the rules of the land, the brand, and the platform. We, you know, we kind of talk about white hat advertising. It's really just making sure that we're promoting great products that we feel great about that would help people live a little better and do what they say and doing it at scale. And, you know, so you can imagine on the brand side, it's a no risk situation for them where they're now able to expand and grow profitably so they can avoid VC funding early on or any kind of higher risk proposition because they're growing profitably. And then as a marketer or as an agency or someone that knows how to do media buying, it's kind of similar in the sense of drop shipping. The only difference is that you're actually working um, with real companies. You're not uh, sourcing stuff from like Alibaba or anything else where you have to deal with all the customer support. You're not really sure what the product quality may be. Um, and you can ensure that all the funnels are also, they're already built for you to generate the highest AOVs possible. And so now you can focus on what you really love marketing and scaling great products that people love, not worrying about getting shut down on Facebook or YouTube because everything is 100% compliant and you can scale through the roof without having to deal with a lot of the extra stuff that comes with either working with a brand directly or managing your own store. That is brilliant. Oh my gosh. So you're basically removing all of the risk for the brand. You're teaming up with power sellers who that's what they do and they're hungry for products that are just totally epic and you're facilitating that in a way and you're making it a zero friction proposition for everybody that's yeah. brilliant dude thank you man yeah we just think that it's all when you can create an ecosystem of aligned incentives where it's a win-win-win where the brand is winning where the the, the marketer is winning where giddy up's winning we all now are incentivized to work together to hit uh, as much scale as possible. And I also think that it's all about this more decentralized and democratized uh, ecosystem, right? Instead of one brand working with one agency and hoping they hit scale you, and, and you having to give them money to figure it out for you, you now have 50 or 100 marketers that are all using their own money to create things to help figure out what is the best angle? What is the best positioning? Uh, what are the best audiences? What are the best channels? What are the best countries? And these are experts in these different areas. And in our experience, it really does take a lot of different types of marketing minds, agencies, you know, media buyers, and so forth to figure out how to profitably sell your product in a way that achieves a level of scale that we provide on a pretty uh, frequent basis, which can result in hundreds, if not thousands of orders a day. That's amazing. So what sort of products, I know you talked about it a little bit, but what sort of products are you really looking for that total game changer? Like this is a home run for everybody when you find this kind of product. Yeah. So it's a great question. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we look into because we're spent, Giddy Up is spending a lot of time, energy, and money on the front end to build, to find the products, to qualify them, to build all the funnels, to build all the creative so we have to be very much like a VC company in a lot of ways. And we basically built uh, a proprietary, you know, modeling system that we put in about 70 data points and then it spits out what we call a GU score, a GU score. And uh, that tells us how likely that product is to do a million dollars on our platform. And so we're looking at a wide variety of things, but on the very highest level, like we only work with direct to consumer products. We wanted to, um, be something that is innovative, that solves a problem, that's more of a need to have than a nice to have. We need to make sure that the cogs, you know, the, the, uh, the margin in between is enough to incentivize the marketer, make sure the brand is profitable and, and so forth. And so we need to make sure that it can equate to an average order value that makes sense for the system. We want to be able to scale, right? And so we're looking to do hundreds, if not thousands of orders a day. And we, we're typically selling two, three, four units per order. So we need to make sure that the brand is, is having their inventory management on lock, that 
going from zero to a thousand sales a day, you can imagine that your customer service is going to start ringing through the roof of people asking questions and all of that. So our biggest thing is that we really, we look at the product, right? Which is really critical and making sure that, um, that there's enough juice and interest and intrigue that's going to drive that level of scale. But then we also look at the brand and the company and making sure that they're the right partner that will work with us to hit scale and once we do hit scale to sustain it. Um, and so there's really those two pieces um, that go into it. Hi there, Ecom Masters. Mike Weiss here again with a friendly reminder that you've unlocked access to our exclusive podcast only training on how to create your own supplement, CBD, pet, or skincare brand in just minutes, where we're gonna break down from A to Z exactly how to put your own design on top selling products and start selling in just minutes. It's incredible. Now the principles that you're gonna learn are exactly the same principles that we've used with our customers who did over $2 billion. That's right, with a B, $2 billion in sales last year alone. You cannot afford not to take me up on this free training. So to get immediate 100% complimentary access, all you gotta do is go to dropfight.com forward slash podcast dash special, or you can just click the link below in the show notes. I will see you soon. So when you see these brands going from a few orders a day or they're, you know, they're doing good. They're, they're making 20, 30, 40, 50 orders a day. And then you, you ramp them up to like thousands of orders a day that you talked about a little bit, but like, what are some of the most common mistakes that you see people make that they may be able to, you may be able to help them start to make sales, but then it's like, ah, the, the business isn't able to handle infrastructure wise. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I would say that uh, there's a lot, a lot to it. Um, one of the ones that I just mentioned was inventory management. So on our end, you know, you have some brands that they're like, you know, hey, you need to have this amount of inventory uh, in um, in production or in your warehouse because we're going to go through it, and we we want to make sure that we're avoiding back order. Back order is the number one mistake. Uh, that I think a lot of brands could avoid if they had the right planning in place. Because if you go into back order for too long, especially if you have uh, marketers that are promoting on Facebook, Facebook surveys every customer after they buy something through an ad and they're asking, did your product arrive on time? How is the customer support? They're asking all these questions and you know, fulfilling the order is, is critical. Um, and so you want to avoid back order, but you don't want to overextend yourself. And so I think making sure that you are doing your projections right that you understand how long is it going to take you from production to actually getting it in your warehouse and ready to ship there's also options right maybe you're shipping it over by boat but maybe if you can move faster you could ship it by air and you can get it to your customers faster but i think that inventory management and projections is, is an area that uh not a lot of people focus on mostly because they're not usually going from like zero sales to a thousand orders a day as quickly as they can within our channel. But that's one, I think preparing yourself for, for customer support, uh, making sure that you have a, a streamlined way to uh, take in tickets, to reply to people. You know, there's a lot of like out of the box softwares that can help you automate a lot of that, whether it's a chat on your website where people want to know, did their product ship? Do they have a tracking number? those types of things, those can aut be automated, you know, to the customer itself. So it's not going to take any resources, but a lot of brands, if you're not experienced, um, can get flustered with it and start to slow down and then they get confused and they're shipping the wrong products. So they, they don't know, you know, what customers are talking about. You really need to just take a breath, breathe in, know that this is a great thing. You know, this is what you wanted. And now how do you get organized in a way that you can deal with what's currently happening and then learn from that so that, we want to sustain it. So how do we grow? Luckily, we spend a lot of time with our brands ahead, ahead of actually selling, prepping them for all of this. You know, some of them are like, I'll believe it when I see it. Other ones understand that, you know, they either came from a referral that we crushed it for, or um, they trust us based on our process and everything else. And they are prepared for it. Um, but I think those, those are the things you really want to make sure, again, especially if you're prom promoting on Facebook, that um, you're covering the different areas that they're asking consumers about. Because if you get a negative uh, score on the Facebook ad platform, 
they're going to limit your reach, they're going to hike up your costs, and they're going to make it pretty much impossible for you to sell users on the platform. So that's really, again, it's how fast, making sure that you're shipping, you know, not going on a crazy back order when you are shipping, that you're shipping quickly, you know, three to five days domestically, if it's going to be international, that you really understand how to not get caught up in customs or any of those other things that could delay the packages. Your customer support is on point. Um, the product quality and how you're shipping your, your packages to the, to the customers is really important now. Um, you know, those are definitely uh, some of the biggest, I think, things to think about when you're on the brand side. So uh, I want to be uh, very respectful of your time. And I, um, you know, I know we're, we're going to keep this one short and sweet. So um, I do have one more question for you, then, then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, but I mean, clearly you're crushing it. And I mean, y'all are doing things that are so many leagues ahead of where most people are. It is just insane. Like, I don't understand why everybody doesn't apply uh, to, to work with you. Uh, it just is such a no brainer to me. It, just, it baffles my mind. Um, but what is one thing that I haven't asked you about um, that you think is like the most important thing that we should know? Uh, and, and I'm particularly uh, interested in learning, looking more into the future of like what you see, how we can, how we can be as effective as possible in, in building our businesses moving forward. Yeah, sure. I mean, we talked a lot about everything on the brand side. I know that you also work with a lot of marketers and salespeople, so I can give a couple quick tips for them if they're looking to, uh, you know, achieve scale with their own products or if they're interested, you know, in working within our model. But, you know, some of the things are, okay, you have a great product, you're excited about it. You know, what do you do to try to achieve some level of scale and get it through the roof? So let's start at the top of the funnel. Really, one of my favorite things is angle testing. And what I mean by angles is what is the real problem that your product solves, right? And so a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners feel like they already know what that is. And I think that is a big mistake and they could be leaving a lot of money on the table. So as an example, you know, we were working with a, uh, a brand who had a Bluetooth tracking device that you could use to track your pets, your cars, your keys, your uh, luggage, uh, every, anything that you didn't want to lose. And when we started working with them, they were like adamant, no, it's about keys. Everyone loses their keys, of course, right? You can never find your keys, that's gonna be it. We were like, cool, but let's test them all. Let's make sure that we really understand why people want to buy this product. And so we did a bunch of testing we ended up creating like, I think it was six or seven different angles. We isolated all the angles. So we were saying, okay, pets, bicycles, luggage, wallets, keys, you know, anything that people are gonna wanna keep track of in every ad was isolated. So one ad was only about how you could use this to track your dog. The image, the headline, the copy was all about dogs. The next one was all about luggage and, and everything else. So that when you're getting click through rates, you're limiting your variables and you know which angle is actually performing um, the best. And so we did a bunch of testing, kind of looking at not only the engagement on the ad, but the intent through the funnel and so forth. And what we found was that the product that they, or the, the angle that they had at the bottom of their list was actually the number one seller and actually resulted in us selling millions of units. Um, of, of what was product. it? So do you have a guess? Do you, do you think you know? Pets. So pets was a very, it was top three. So great guess. The top angle at the time, and this was a, uh, like five years ago, uh, was actually cars. So uh, I think before then, Google Maps didn't like show you where you parked, and that was a big angle. People wanted to make sure, uh... that, like, you know, just having kind of that safeguard in place. But the thing is, is that people used it for way more. But the in, for whatever reason, the thing that really resonated with people was putting it in their car, and then they would buy multiple units for their pets, for their you know, for their luggage and so forth. And the thing is, is that if you let sometimes your ego get in the way of you thinking you really know what problem your product solves, you're not going to test everything else. And ultimately, you're going to leave a lot of uh, opportunity and money on the table. So I think angle testing is really important. Um, the other thing that I would recommend is, uh, so we use advertorials. Um, and so that's a really big strategy where basically when you go from Facebook, when you get the clicks, so let's say, Pets was a big one. Um, going from the ads to someone clicks, instead of going right to your sales page to buy, we're creating a piece of content that is kind of like a, 
a blog post, if you will. So it's not like a long sales letter or anything that you'll see in like the info product space or whatever. This is something you might see on like Business Insider or Huffington Post or whatever it might be. And that advertorial aligns with the angle, right? So, okay, they clicked on a pet one, then they go to an article, probably with something like a testimonial that we had brought to life. So a girl that lost her dog, she was really upset. And then, but she had this device on the dog and ended up finding it, it was a great story. Um, and basically in that article, you're, you're hooking on all the emotions, you're using all the direct response kind of persuasive tactics to get people to the sales page. And when they get to the sales page, they're ready to buy. Um, content is just super powerful. You usually want to see about a 20% 20 to 30% click through rate on your pre-sale page to your landing page. That tells you that it's a good, you know, it's a good piece of content where people are excited and interested in learning more. And then you go to your, <clears throat> your landing page. And then ideally, if you can do this, you, you want to keep consistency throughout the funnel. So test at all the angles. Let's just go with yours. You know, now as a top three angle pets, go to the advertorial. People are interested. Now they go to the landing page. Instead of having something general, um, we actually have a headline and an image that has the device on a pet, on a dog. We show all the other use cases as well, but we want to make sure that everything is really consistent for the user so that they're landing on something that has sparked their interest and it's keeping that, um, that attention throughout the entire uh, process. And, consistency. Uh, yeah, so it's the consistency throughout the funnel. And then obviously the best practices of having a very clear call to action, um, making sure that everything on your sales page is reaffirming everything they learned ahead of time in terms of the benefits of the product, what it is, what it does, just that consistency uh, throughout the entire thing. And then you want to get them to an offer. And then the question is, how are you going to get them to an irresistible offer that will get them to spend as much money as possible by giving them a deal that they can't say no to? And so I, I don't see a lot of people doing this, but a great way to boost average order value and um, your margin is through bundles. You know, So maybe you're selling one unit at retail and then you have a buy one, get one 50% off with free shipping. You have a buy two, get one free with free shipping. Now you're getting people moving up into their cart value, which ultimately is going to get you more margin um, on every sale and sell more units out the door. And so that's another you know big strategy in addition to upsells, inline upsells, one click upsells, you know, um, not going overboard and creating a bad experience, but hey, when people are in shopping mode, especially in Q4, which is coming up, they want to make buying as easy as possible. And so the easier you can make it and continue to add value through great irresistible offers, the more that you're going to generate off of that one sale, and then the more that you can now spend on customer acquisition. And ultimately, the brand or the, the marketer that can spend the most money to acquire a customer is the one that can, is going to win. It's not about lowering your customer acquisition costs. It's about squeezing all of the juice out of that customer, both on the first transaction over the lifetime of that customer so that you could spend and outbid and buy your competitors out of the game because they can't keep up with you. And, uh, and so the last thing I'll just say after that, just to squeeze in as much value as I can within this short time frame, um, is what are you doing once you already have a customer? Uh, I think not, as many people are focusing on email as a great marketing channel as they could. I think there's so much opportunity through email by providing, yeah, you can do sales, but how do you provide value? How do you make it to your customer every time they see your email wants to open it? And if all you're doing is blasting them with promotions, at the end of the day, if they're not really always looking to shop, if it's not a consumable or anything else, they might stop opening your email. But if every time they open your email, they get a bunch of value out of it or interesting piece of content, they're gonna open it. And the more that they open it, the more opportunity you have to put something in front of them that could be transactional worthy or something that will help you uh, out in the long run. Maybe it's a survey or something else, but in order to do that, you have to have their attention. You have to create you know, that engagement. So you know, there's a lot more uh, to it, but you know, I figured since you have a bunch of marketers uh, listening to this, maybe going through those couple steps could be helpful. So wait, you're saying there's more than just those three things to building a humongous, ridiculously <laughs> profitable company? Just a couple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, hey, man, I was just, um, Eric, I'm, I'm so grateful for, uh, for, for you coming on the show. I know you're a busy man. I mean, uh, 
you know, you have a ton of people on your team. You all are growing like crazy. You're doing some amazing work. So thank you for all the work that you do. And, and thank you for coming on to share. I really do appreciate it. Absolutely, man. See you soon. Awesome. And uh, to, for, for everybody that wants to get a little bit more involved and, um, you know, maybe uh, come work with y'all and, and see if, uh, see if it's a good fit. I know y'all are uh, very particular about, you know, it has to be the exact right person. So there's, there's limited availability, but if somebody does want to come in and apply, how, how do they go through that process? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm very active on LinkedIn, so you can reach out to me directly there, Eric Schechter, Giddy Up. Um, if you're a brand or a partner, if you go to giddyup.io at the bottom of the website, we have a brands page and we have a, a affiliate, we call it affiliates uh, on the website. So depending on what you are, we have sign up forms there. Um, but I, you know, if you have any questions, uh, or I can help with anything else, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to geek out over, uh, the marketing and sales stuff. So, uh, happy to help how I can. Awesome. Well, you're the man. Thank you. And to everybody watching and listening, I want to thank you and I will see you on the next episode. Take care now. Hello again, Ecom Masters. Mike was here again with a big thank you for sticking with us to the end of this episode. I know how valuable your time is and I want to congratulate you for setting yourself apart from the pack by investing your attention into this podcast. Now make sure to maximize this time by taking notes while it's still fresh listening to the episode multiple times if you need to and implementing what you have learned right away into your own business. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more training and want to learn the step-by-step -step methodology that you need to build the e-com business of your dreams, I want you to join me for an exclusive invite-only training that I'm only giving specifically for podcast listeners. Now, in it, we're going to share the secrets of what we've used to scale Dropify into the 2019 5000 number 55 fastest growing company in America. You will not find this information anywhere else guaranteed to get immediate 100% free access. All you got to do is go to dropify.com forward slash podcast dash special or just click the link below and in the show notes and I will see you on the other side.